Hello, my name is Master Banks, and I'm happy to present our work, a deep learning approach for motion forecasting using 40 OCT data. But first, why should you be interested in deep learning for motion forecasting? Motion forecasting is a relevant problem for many medical applications. One example is radiotherapy. Here, a precise tumor radiation is essential. However, the patient is constantly moving, for example, due to breathing motions, which requires to constantly adapt the radiation with respect to the patient's motion. Another example is interoperative imaging, where often the field of view is limited to a few millimeters or centimeters, and therefore the current region of interest, short ROI, can be lost quickly due to tissue or surgical tool movement, which requires constant tracking of the ROI and corresponding adjustment of the field of view. For this purpose, optical coherence tomography, short OCT, can be used in combination with deep learning. OCT is an imaging modality with a high spatial and temporal resolution and allows for fast volumetric imaging. Recently, deep learning methods have shown promising results from motion estimation using two OCT volumes. Here, two volumes, a template and a moving state, are directly used as an input for a CNN to estimate the motion vector between the two images. However, performing the actual compensation introduces a lag between the adjustment and the motion estimation. This can be problematic if fast and large motions occur. One approach to overcome this problem is motion forecasting. Therefore, we propose end-to-end -end deep learning methods for motion forecasting and estimation using entire sequences of OCT volumes. So, let's take a closer look at the different deep learning models that we use. The input for our models is a sequence of OCT volumes called XT, and the output is the current motion vector, delta STN, as well as the future motion vectors, delta SDN plus 1 and delta SDN plus 2. Our first approach is based on the previous method and only uses two volumes, XT0 and XTM, as an input to estimate the current motion vector as well as to predict the future motion vectors. This method is based on a two-path approach with shared parameters. Each of the paths consists of one 3D convolution layer and uses shared weights. Afterwards, the outputs are concatenated along the feature dimension and fed into a densely connected convolutional network with 3D convolutions to estimate the motion vectors. Second, we use entire sequence of volumes and extend the two-path approach to a multipath architecture with shared weights, where the number of paths is equal to the number of input volumes in a sequence. Afterwards, we concatenate the outputs of the multipath architecture into the feature dimension and subsequently use our dense net with 3D convolutions. Third, we consider the four-dimensional structure of the data and directly learn from both spatial and temporal dimensions by using 40 spatial and temporal convolutions. We employ three subsequent 40 convolutional layers, followed by our dense net with 40 convolutions. Fourth, we use a mixed 3D 40 approach and combine 40 convolutions with a multipath approach. At first, we split the input sequence and use the multipath 3D CNN to individually process each volume of the sequence. Then, we reassemble the temporal dimension by concatenating the outputs into a temporal dimension. Afterwards, we employ our dense net 4D baseline block. Fifth, we first process a sequence of volumes with a gate recall neural network with convolutional gating operations. Then, we employ our 3D baseline CNN to the output of the recurrent network. To evaluate our methods, we consider a tissue dataset using a chicken breast sample and a swapped OCT device. Overall, we acquire 100 sequences of OCT volumes for 40 different regions of interest of a chicken breast sample. Note, for our dataset, we use various different trajectories for the movements and consider a sequence length of 5 OCT volumes. Next, let's have a look at the results. Here, we see the box plots for the mean absolute errors for motion estimation as well as motion forecasting of 1 and 2 time steps into the future. Notably, Using temporal information improves the estimation performance compared to the previous approach 2 pass CNN 3D. In particular, our novel mixed 3D 4D deep learning approach and pass CNN 4D performs best. Also, our novel deep learning method leads to promising forecasting performance. Using this method, the mean absolute error for forecasting is even lower than the estimation error of 2 pass CNN 3D. This demonstrates that the spatial processing with the multipath approach followed by the joint temporal and spatial processing with a 40 CNN is highly effective for the task at hand. In conclusion, using a stream of volumes improves estimation performance and allows for forecasting. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.